just starting off the actual drawing here and I'm beginning with what I like to call the envelope method. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm seeking to find the, the highest, most, highest point on his face, the lowest point, the leftmost point, and the rightmost point. And if I can kind of get those edges defined as they relate to the edges of the paper, then I'll have his head in the right place. And this envelope method, um, how does it feed into the process as you move forward? So again, that just helps me find where it's going to go. I don't want to run out of room yep. by making it too high or too low. Mm -hmm. And what I'm beginning now is what's called the Loomis method. So I've, um, I've described a circle for his cranium. Yep. Um, it's going to be three-dimensional, a sphere, just a ball. And then essentially I've just cut off the side of it, and that represents the flat part of the head where the temples go. And now I'm putting in an abstraction for um, the top of the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. That's the centermost line. Below that is the bottom of the nose. Below that is the eye line. What I've just put in is the hairline, if he had hair. But in this case, <laughs> uh, just the corner between his forehead and the top of his head. Um, there, there is a corner there, even if, even if there's no hair. Yeah. And then I've just put in the center line. Cool. So what this is for is basically a way of taking a very complex object. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, the head is very Extremely. complicated. Extremely. Yeah. And it's simplifying it yeah. into... Um, what's going to ultimately just be a ball with cut off sides for the cranium and then a wedge for the jaw. Yeah, you used the word abstraction a minute ago. Um, what do you mean by that? It's, it's just that, you know, these lines aren't going to show up in the final drawing. Okay. These will be gone. Yeah. So it's just a stepping stone to what will eventually be his face. It's taking, again, you know, if I say to you, draw a face, yeah. you can't. It's yeah. not a thing that you can do. <laughs> um, <laughs> but to to draw these couple lines marking the proportions between the features, yeah, that's possible. Mm -hmm. And then you can start to add the features themselves. Like mm -hmm. I just added the ear, right? Now I'm finding the corners of the eyebrows, so on and so forth. Okay. And you can work your way out of this, um, again, this very abstract concept and into something that looks realistic. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And do you need a process to draw the heads correctly? Um, unless you're just a magician that can, that can just draw, you know, from memory and, um, and have it look perfect the first time. And it's a great likeness. Um, for me, I'm not like that. So I need a process and ideally one that I can repeat the same way every time. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This, this instills confidence because, um, I know if I go to a portrait drawing session, or if I'm doing a commission or whatever the case may be. Yeah, you can reproduce it. Exactly. I'm not looking at the paper thinking, okay, how do I start? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't have to reinvent the wheel every that's, time yeah, I do it. Yeah, that's so helpful. That's so helpful. Yep. For access to our course, Paint Realistic Watercolor Portraits, visit the link in the description below. Let's all get better together.